So let me just catch up to where we are. So that's the basic idea of sequences, how they could be represented. Limits, of course, you got good old L'Hopital's making a comeback, right? But don't forget about L'Hopital's, it's gonna show up in a few different ways in chapter 11. Um, this is a really quick, I mean, this is just a kind of review about how to do limits, period, but um, hopefully limits weren't so traumatic that you blocked all memory of them out, right? That sometimes happens, but um, just a little review of limits, and you guys did these, is that true? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And then this is the hard part, trying to go backwards. If you're given a sequence that's already fleshed out number-wise, can you write sort of like the generating function, sort of like doing the opposite of what was up here, right? So this can get very tricky. I don't think the first two are terribly difficult. Right? I don't think any of these are all that difficult, to be honest. I mean, these are, these are the same. Well, that one's really easy on this one. Anyway, you guys do these. I think I think he said you guys stopped short of geometric. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you guys, I like it. We talked about infinite series. So let me ask you this: a weird question. Just what I like to start with when we hit chapter eleven, but I sort of wasn't here. So, do you guys think it's possible to add an infinite number of numbers and get a finite number, not not have infinity? Right. So. Sometimes uh, people think one plus two plus three, that's an infinite number of numbers, correct? Four, five, six. So if they just keep adding them, obviously it's going to go to infinity. Do you guys agree with me? If they just keep adding them forever, <coughs> the sum's infinity. Is it possible to add an infinite number of numbers? And I'll even make it better. An infinite number of positive numbers. Because I could say... Uh, Negative one plus one plus negative one plus one plus negative one plus one plus negative one plus one. That's not going to go to infinity, correct? You guys sort of with me? Okay, is everybody sort of with me? So is it possible to add an infinite number of positive numbers and have the answer come out to be less than infinity? Some finite number. What do you guys think? No. All right, so here is the simplest example of that happening. I really don't like overhead crap. I'm going to turn it off. Cool. Um, so the answer is totally, really easy to. Now watch, you ready? Okay, you ready? What if I had, do you guys agree with me? Is that positive? Yes. So then what if I add that to 0.01? Is that still positive, right? What if I just keep going in that manner? Can anyone see what it's going to add up to me? Oh, yeah. 0 0.1 repeating. Do you guys see how I really want what I'm about to say to make sense? Because I say this a lot. Do you see how the elements of this sequence get out of their own way? They don't overlap, do they? Or they don't overlap. You could actually, I mean, this is the simplest way to do it. It's just to fill each decimal place. So this would become 0 0.11111 repeating. Does anyone know what that is as a fraction, by the way? Yes. Do you just happen to know that? or It's really cool. What's one third? 0.33333. Isn't one third three ninths? Three ninths is 0.33333. So what's one ninth? 0.11111. Just divide by three, yeah? So what's two ninths? 0.22222. Yes? You guys so, sort of with me? Okay. Let that be cool. Let that be semi cool. Okay. All right. Kind of cool, right? Okay. Um, all right. So it is completely possible to add an infinite number of numbers and get something less than infinity. In fact, this adds up to be way less than one. That's kind of crazy, yes? Uh, what if I had something like one half plus one fourth plus one, uh, what are you doing, Jeff? Um, let me do, yeah, let's do one plus one fourth plus one ninth. There we go, I'm just mixing two different things together. 
Can somebody tell me what the basic idea behind that sequence is that's leading into the series? The sequence elements. What's, what's the difference between a sequence and a series? Sequence is a list of numbers. Just numbers with commas between them. While a series is some of those elements, right? Not S-O-M-E, sorry. You add the elements up, yes? So the sequence that's in the series would be 1, 1 fourth, 1 ninth, 1 sixteenth. What's the nth term of that sequence? 1 over n squared. 1 over n squared. I love it. They kick ass. So what do you think? Do you think that that goes to infinity? Or do you think that that goes to some finite number? It's not quite as clear cut as this, is it? Because they're not, what's one fourth? 0.25. 0 0.25. What's one ninth? 0.11. One, 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 one. See how they overlap? Do you see what I mean by they overlap? Okay. So if they overlap, they have to start to get out of their own way so they don't kind of accumulate too quickly and go to infinity. This one kind of arbitrarily, kind of like trivially, gets out of its own way. It literally gets out of its own way. Each one has its own spot to go to. This one, it overlaps a bit. Shit. Right? So I will tell you, this one converges. What about this one? What's this? What's the nth term of this one? You know what's pretty easy? One over n. Holy Jesus, Jeff. You didn't set this up at all. You just turned it on and hoped. Okay. It's one over n. Now, that doesn't seem very different from this, does it? I mean, it's, it's a little bit... Do you understand how that seems like it would have less of a chance? Aren't the elements bigger? Yeah. And actually, this one, this one diverges. If you add up all the elements in that, it goes to infinity. Does that? It's the reverse of what I said earlier. You guys were so, a lot of you guys were like, yeah, if you have an infinite number of numbers, you add them up, it goes to infinity. Yeah. Now, if you look at this, does it look like it's going to go to infinity? One plus a half plus a third plus, a, does it look like it's going to go to infinity? No, it doesn't. But it actually does go to infinity. That's crazy shit. And of course, there's an infinite number of them. And they just don't get out of their own way fast enough, and it just kind of snowballs to infinity. And maybe. Are you guys kind of seeing what I'm talking about? Now, now, obviously, the whole point of this chapter, one big piece of it is, when does a series converge, meaning it doesn't go to infinity, it goes to an actual number, and when does it diverge? Right. Now, real quick, um, let me see. Let me put some. So these are really. This is this one especially is really huge. This one's got its own little name and everything. So we'll talk about it, and then you know. So we'll get there. So I'm, don't worry. There's going to be a lot more details with this. I'm just trying to get some ground ideas thrown in. There. Okay. Um, in fact, let's do. I have to do a couple things. Let me see. So this one definitely does what? It diverges. In what way? I'm going to be more specific, and I'll, sh I'll tell you what I mean here in a minute. But be a little more specific. It goes to what? If you add them all up, this is going to go to infinity. Now, this is very loose notation up here right now. So let me, let me define a few things. Um, does anyone know what this means? Partial sums. So if I add the fir up, if I add up to the first term, what do I get? One. One. If I add up to the second term, what do I get? Three. Three. If I add up to the third term, I get six. Six. I like. Okay. And then, and then ten. Blah blah blah. Right. Right. So the limit, as n goes to infinity, of S n is infinity. That's the technical way to say what I just said. You add up one, two, three, four forever, it's going to go to frickin' infinity. That's the everyday way to say that shit. Here's the technical way to say what I just said. Limit of the partial sums 
As n goes to infinity, is infinity. I like it. So, if I put up here 0.1 plus 0.01, good Lord, Jeff, plus 0.001. So I have S1 is 0.1, S2 is 0.11. Uh, what's the limit as n goes infinity of the partial sums? What did we figure out earlier? 0.19. Yeah, so 1 ninth. A nice quick way to write it, right? Or 0.1 repeating, right? Okay, how are you guys doing? I'm just trying to get some notation out there. So last time with Patrick, he definitely talked about the A notation, right? So up here, what would A4 be, for example? Four. It's crazy, right? The fourth term. What would A4 be over there? Yeah. 0 0.0001. I like it. Okay, so A sub number represents the um, individual term of the sequence. S sub a number is adding everything up to that term. Partial sums. I love it. Okay. How are you guys doing? So we haven't, there's a lot of details we haven't gone over yet. I said that the one over n squared things converges and the one over n diverges. I haven't proven that shit yet. All right, so there's a lot of details. But I'm just trying to get some, some ground level kind of words and terminology and notation. Okay. This is not the only way for something to diverge. So this one's definitely divergent and this one's definitely convergent. say it's converge. Okay. This is not the only way for something to diverge. I earlier had a sequence that did not converge. Uh, not a sequence, but I'm sorry, a series that did not converge. And I don't know if you guys caught it. Uh, one plus negative one plus one plus negative one. Does that go to infinity? No. Does that go to like seven or two or zero? Does it go to zero? Um, no. Because what's S1? One. one. What's S2? Zero. 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 What's S3? One. one. What's S4? Zero. zero. Does it ever, what's it mean for a limit to exist? It has to be headed in that direction and, and then a finite number. Okay. Okay, beautiful. I'm waiting for an idea of distance, right? So it's got, for the limit of some sequence of things to exist, it's got to be getting forever closer to that thing, arbitrarily close. So if you thought that the limit was zero, then forever after something, it's got to forever be arbitrarily close to zero. So it's got to be one half away from zero at some point, right? Well, sometimes it is zero, and sometimes it's one. Sometimes it's zero, and sometimes... Is it forever closer than a half to zero? All right, do you guys understand? This is, remember in 180, this is the whole idea of, of limits. And, and uh, I think my class, I had to actually skip this section, which really killed me, but there's a section about epsilon delta. Did anybody ever learn about epsilon delta? See, everybody... Anyway, sorry, I'll, I, had to, I had to skip it because I think I had to miss some days. Yeah. Um, anyway. So this is another way. So what we call this divergence is, believe it or not, is oscillatory divergence. Because it oscillates. That's crazy. And we've seen that shit before. What's the limit as n goes to infinity of the sine of n? What does sine do forever? Freaking zero. oscillate. There's another example of oscillatory divergence, right? I just, when we did Calc 1, we just don't say the word divergent. We just say it doesn't, it's, it's a, it's, does not exist. It's oscillatory, right? Maybe. Okay. I like it. Okay. So there's some ground rules, some ground ideas. Uh, I want to talk about geometric series just to get more specific. And then we're going to kind of work into section 11.3. Uh, 
Geometric is one of the last ideas in section 11.2. So 11.1 1 is sequences. Please let that be simple. Do you guys talk about recursive sequences? It was an example of that. All right, so before I get too far, let's do this. Okay. This is going to be a weird night for me because I've got to kind of catch up and keep going. So, um, so for example, What's the idea behind Fibonacci sequence? It's you add the last. Yeah, I have to add two to get the next one. But I, right now, how many do, numbers do I have written down? None. How many do I have to give you so that you can actually start doing what it wants you to have to give you two? And we call those seeds. And then it's recursively defined. How would you define how to get the next one? How to get A3? A1 plus A2. How do you get A4? You can do it, John. A2 plus A3. I love it. So how do you get AN? A10 minus 1 plus A. Minus 2. Minus 2. I love it. Okay. Just put it out of order. It doesn't matter, right? It's addition. Who cares? This is called a recursive formula. Recursive basically means it's referring to itself. It's building on itself, right? Fibonacci sequence, real quick. You can have an entire, well, I keep, I, I'll, sometimes I'll say you can have an entire semester. You can actually have an entire lifetime devoted to analyzing Fibonacci sequence. Has anybody, anybody ever heard of like a golden rectangle? <laughs> okay, there's a golden spiral, sure. It's kind of related to a golden rectangle, right? So. A uh, golden rectangle is when you have, uh, you place something here so that the, I'm not sure if I'm going to remember all the, but so the, the um, ratio of all these separate things is a certain amount. Okay. It's the golden number. And the golden number, real, I don't want to talk about Fibonacci forever because this is not Fibonacci class. I'm sorry. But the golden number is if you keep going in the sequence and you divide one element by the number before it, and you let that go to infinity, it eventually approaches 1.618, blah, 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 blah. Real quick, guys. How big are note cards? Give me one size of a note card. Three by five. Three by five. Three by five. You mean, how about, how big is, um, I don't know, shit. <laughs> oh, uh, isn't like standard widescreen 16 to nine? Yeah. What's 16 divided by nine? Nobody? Anybody? No, it's a little bit more than 1.6, right? It's like 1.7, I think, but it's close to... 1.77. 1.77? Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Pretty close to 1.618. So you'll see, and this is the last thing I'll say about it, like ratios of, of measurements of the human body, they come out to be the golden number. Uh, they saw it in Egyptian pyramids. Ratios of like length and width to height and, and, the, and the little blocks they use, blah, blah, they all were coming after the golden number. So people were like, did they know the math? But in reality, Fibonacci sequence is all about what's pleasing to humans. If you have a piece of art where something's not in the center, you, anybody ever do any art? You know, you're not supposed to necessarily put something in the center. I mean, you're not, it's not like a rule, but uh, if you put something, if you kind of break the things up in this kind of form, it's more pleasing to someone's eye. If you play frequencies that are close to this ratio, they come from the Fibonacci sequence, that's more pleasing to the ear. So the, your alarm that wakes you up in the morning, anybody have an alarm, eh, eh, eh. is that pleasing to the ear? No. So those are composed of frequencies whose ratios are way far away from this. So you can, you can kind of see how Fibonacci by itself would be an entire year, possibly, at least, of studying to see what it is. So you can actually go to Google and type Fibonacci music, Fibonacci art, Fibonacci, what's something you're interested in? Anything. You have any interests? Trails. Say again? Trails. Fibonacci hiking, why not? There could be something. Fibonacci, uh, a friend of mine made money in the stock market during, I don't know, kids, have you heard about that we had a recession? 
like yeah. 15 years ago. And of course we had a, a little problems more recently, but uh, a friend of mine during the recession, he used a Fibonacci approach to stocks, uh, when to buy, when to sell. And he made money consistently throughout, right? So Fibonacci stuff is in everything. Okay. Don't suddenly go look it up and try to put a bunch of money in stuff, right? And then blame me. <laughs> no. There's a little more to it, but still, it, it's roughly it. Okay, okay. I'm really sorry. I, I go off in tangents. Um, so that's Fibonacci. So the Fibonacci is one example of a recursive formula. So let's let's create a recursive formula. Um, so how do you create a recursive formula? Oh boy. You just freaking make some shit up. So how many seeds? Somebody tell me. One, two, or three. How many seeds do we want? One, two, or three? Two. I like it. two. Okay. So we want two seeds. So I want you to help me. Let's create a formula for this. The nth term of the sequence. It's going to be dependent on the two before it. But it's not going to be Fibonacci. Let's make it something different. Fibonacci is just add the two. Let's be more interesting. So let's say maybe we take three times the one before it and we subtract the one before that. That's recursive. How do I know it's recursive? Because one element is dependent on earlier elements. That's how I know it's recursive. And I need two seeds to get this thing going. There's two things I have to be told before I can start generating more. Yes? So somebody tell me what A1 is. One, I love it. Somebody tell me what A2 is. Somebody else. Anything. It could be anything. Four. Four, I love it. So see, what's A3 going to be then? Take a minute and figure out what A3 is. You can do it. Real quick, what is N here? Three. Three. So this is going to be... 3a2 minus a1. So this will be 12 minus 1. 11. Thank you. I knew we were going to get there. All right. So you can, and you got, we can keep going, but you see how relatively simple that is? That's really nice. I mean, my God, compared to anything we did in Chapter 7, you got to let 11 and 1 be nice. That's recursive formulas. Okay. Um, oh, that's right. So that's the last piece from 11.1. The last piece from 11.2 is a specific kind of um, series. Geometrics. A geometric series are series that are based on, on multiplication. So something, for example, like, um, so some examples. Uh, 1, 4, 16, 64, blah, blah, blah. Somebody tell me a few things about this. What's the first element? Holy shit. What is the number I keep multiplying by? Four, uh, two? Four, right? How did you determine that? In this case, it's pretty simple, but what not one way you can always determine it? No matter how freaky the numbers are, if you know it's a geometric, can't you just take one and divide it by the one before? What's the mathematical that I, uh, word for when I put a number over another number? Ratio. ratio. So we call that number R for ratio. R is the common ratio, four. Okay, so can anyone tell me? And now I can't remember. Now, damn it. Every book is different. And now I can't remember this book. Uh, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, good, good, okay. That's right. That's what I thought. Um... Yeah, okay. 
I just couldn't remember. Some books start with zero, and thankfully this one starts at one. So can somebody help me figure out a definition for the nth term? And it's not going to be recursive. Are you guys with me? I, if I wanted to know the 70th term, there should be a shortcut. Does everybody agree with that? I shouldn't have to know the 69th term to figure out the 70th. I should be able to figure it out more directly, right? Is it kn minus 1 times n? No. It's interesting. How do I get from this term to that term? What do I do? Multiply by 4. I like it. How do I get from this term to, to that term? Multiply for, so how do I get from this term to that term? Multiply by 4 twice. So multiply by 4 squares, right? So to get to the second term, I multiply by 1 4. To get to the third term, I multiply by 2 4. To get to the first term, I just don't multiply by any 4. So what's the nth term then? 4 to the n. Not quite. Yes. 1 times 4 to the n minus 1. Now, I'm putting the 1 times because did it have to start at 1? No. But obviously now we can just screw the 1 times, right? You don't have to write that. You don't have to screw it either. Just erase it. Right. Okay. So a n would be 4 to the n minus 1. How are we all feeling out there? So geometric means the generation of the series, or the sequence in this case, would be multiplication, right? So of course the series would just be adding these terms of the sequence together. Now, does that converge? If I, if I looked at the series, you can do it, John. Does that converge? Oh, hell no, right? That's so desperately diverges. I mean, it diverges quicker than the one, two, three, four did, right? So, sort of. The, the idea of quick, how to get to infinity, that's, that gets deep. But let's not go there. Um, what, how could this possibly have the hope to converge then? What would have to be true in order to make this converge? R would have to be less than 1. Okay, all right. Um, so let's see, what if R was 1? What if A1 was 7 and R was 1? Can anyone figure out what that sequence would be? Seven seven seven. Seven, 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 seven. So that diverges, correct? So that would be seven plus seven plus seven plus seven. Okay. But what if A1 is seven, but R is um, one half? What would the, bless you, what would the elements be? Seven. 3.5, 11, 7 fourths, 7, no, you can do it, 8, 7, 6, 8, 9, 9, 9, right? That would be the elements of the sequence that looks like it might have a chance to converge, right? It's really 7 times, well, let me, let me do that, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place, so excuse me. I just I get a little anime because I love this shit. And right now, again, just go with me. We're going to kind of get more details. I'm just trying to get a lot of ideas out there right now. Um, let's focus on this guy. So if I look at the series related to the sequence, it would be 7 plus 7 halves plus 7 fourths plus 7 eighths. Oh my God, John! You can do it, buddy. Blah, 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 blah. Which would be seven times one plus a half plus a fourth. Hello, plus one eighth plus one sixteenth. Now we don't have a way to prove it yet, but remember that one over n diverged, and then one over n squared converged. We still have to prove those things. But I'm just telling you that right now. We're going to see that. This seems to have a decent chance to converge, right? Okay, I like it. So let's do this. Let's prove this shit. Let's actually get some details going on. Enough of this hand-wavy crap, Jeff. 
show us some freaking math, math for. Okay. So let's look at the partial sums of a generic geometric sequence. How does that sound? Yeah, like, I don't know. Let's try. Okay. So there's this guy. This guy is. It, this guy doesn't matter or shit, but. It's kind of following with what Lou said, a really good example would be, well, R less than 1, that seems to have a chance, doesn't it? Because then at least every element is getting smaller. And does everybody agree in order for any series of positive numbers, let's not talk about alternating stuff, where it's plus, minus, plus, any series of positive numbers, the only way it could possibly converge is they have to, at some point, eventually be getting smaller. If they're getting bigger than at some point, they have to be getting smaller forever. Do we all agree on that? Does that just make intuitive sense? Maybe. Okay. If it's just going, if it's increasing forever, it's going to go to infinity. Leave me alone. Get out of here. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> right? If it's not increasing or decreasing at all, what's that going to do? That's freaking 7777, isn't it? That's going to diverge. 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 forever. So it, it's got to at least decrease. And it's got to decrease quickly enough to kind of get out of its own way. Now, again, I'm, I'm laying a lot of vague stuff right now. I'm just trying to get everybody on board with the idea, and then we're going to formalize it. Okay, how are you guys feeling so far? You know, like, keep going. You might make sense. If you just keep talking, maybe something you say will make sense, Jeff. Okay. Uh, let's see. What was I about to do? That's right. We're going to do some cool shit. You ready? Uh, I'll tell you this. I, I want to show you a little concrete example of what we're about to do. Okay. I'll be nice. We're going to do some really abstract shit in a minute. Let me show you a concrete example of what we're about to do. Um, yeah, okay. What I want to know about this, real quick, does anyone know how to do this? I want to know what fraction that is, because do you guys remember rational numbers are either terminating or repeating decimals? Do you guys remember that? That's what rational numbers, it can be written as a fraction if they terminate, well that's obvious, if they terminate, it's 1 over 10 billion or 1 over 100 billion or whatever, right? If they, if they stop, but if they go forever, they have to repeat. Does that repeat? Shit, yeah, that's what the freaking bar means, Jeff. Okay. So this has to have a fractional representation. Are you guys with me? Just like 0.1 forever is one ninth. 0.3 forever is one third, right? This has to have some kind of a fractional representation. Does anyone know how to find that? What would you do in your calculator? Uh, isn't there like a fraction? Sure, but you have to give it the whole decimal that it needs. Can you give it this entire decimal? How far does it go? How far does this decimal go? Oh, shit. Yes. Look at that. Something the calculator can't do that humans can. Doesn't that feel good? <laughs> Maybe? Yes? So, go ahead. Okay. In front of the decimal and exactly. Then subtract okay. and then, yeah. The worst part about this stupid number is the, the infinite repetition, yes? Obviously. How do I make this into a decimal? I mean, it's into a fraction? Well, it's easy. It's 14 over 100. Leave me alone, Jeff. So if only that infinite repetition would go away, everything would be better, yes? So here's what we do. What do we do in algebra when we don't know what something is? We call it x, right? Do I know what the fractional representation of this is? No, so I'm going to call it x. If I multiply this by 100, what do I get? Multiply this by 100. 14.1414 forever, yes? I moved it over, but aren't there still the same number of 14s over there? Infinity's weird. Okay. If I subtract these, do you see how this shit cancels? 
What's 14 minus 0? 14. What's 100 minus 1? 100x is minus 1x. That's right, kids, 99. And if I divide by 99, don't I get what I want? So do 14 divided by 99 on a calculator. See if Jeff has any idea what he's talking about. Yeah. A little bit, okay. Just a little bit. Isn't that neat? So if you have 273, 273, 273, you just multiply by 1,000 because then the repetitions will line up and you can cancel that shit out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So most repeating decimals are over 9, over 9, over 3, over 33, over 11, over, you know, something really. Um, yes. Because of the fact of how these are going to work. Eleven thing I might have just made up. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I subtracted. So this minus this, this oh, minus okay. this. Yeah, yeah. So if I subtract one side, I got to subtract the other side. Kick ass. Okay, okay. All right. Now, keeping what we just did in mind, now we're going to do something a little more abstract. So let's say I'm given. Um, uh, sequence, a geometric sequence. <laughs> Mimi. Okay. Can we write, and let's make this into a sum. So I'm going to look at this as a series. You can do it, John. There we go, buddy. So what would that be? Give me a few elements. So when n is 1, I get I'll start us off. A1. When n is 2, I get. Say again. A. Yeah, A2. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Not A2. I get A1R. This is just 1, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because I just keep multiplying that by 1, 4, by 2, 4, it's just like we did earlier, right? So it's the same number where I start times so many steps. It just keeps going. A one R squared plus blah 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 blah. So let's look at. Let me let me kind of change. Oh, damn it, Jeff. Let's look at the sum up to K. So this would be A one R. What would go up here? What is one? Okay. Are you guys with me so far? So this would be. This would be. S K. Is that clear? Because again, what's S K mean? Some of the series up to the kth element. That's what that is, yes? You guys with me? And again, somehow I'm about to do something related to what we just did here. What is R times SK? There's SK. What's R times SK? Here's SK. What if I multiply all this by R? What do I get? I get A1R, right? Plus A1R squared. Plus A1R cubed. A1R cubed. And this would become A1, multiply this by R, what do you do? Every time you multiply R, you get one more R, don't you? So it'll be A1, R, to the K. One more R, yes? Is everybody with me? Yeah, it's sort of like the stuff we did here. Now it's a lot less concrete, it's more abstract, but it's the same idea. Because now what I'm about to do is, do you see how a bunch of shit cancels? If I subtract them, so if I do, um, which way I want to do it, Jeff? Okay, I want to do, I always forget this, damn it, Jeff. All right, SK minus RSK. What do I get? I get A1, these cancel, these cancel, these cancel, these cancel, these cancel. Do you gotta follow it? What's gonna be left alive? Are you guys all with me? If I subtract these two things, this cancels with this. This cancels with this. This cancels with this. 
What's right before this? What's the one right before this? That cancels that. So what's left alive at the end? Let me stop for a minute. How you guys doing? Okay. So then I get, and I really, I want to know what this is. I want to know what the k partial sum is in a better way, because this is sort of open. So look what I can do. I can, can't I take sk out? So then I get S sub K is A1. Let me write it like this. I'm going to factor an A1 out over 1 minus R. How we do? Yes. So what does that mean? Okay, we're going to do a concrete example. I love it. I, I, at the moment, now, now if I wanted to know what S8000 was, doing it this way, wouldn't I have to write down each of these and add them up? I would have to know the first plus the second plus the third plus the fourth up to the 8000th one. Down here, look, if I want to know what S8000 is, don't I just put an 8000 there and get it one step? I don't have to know what every freaking element is, do I? I just have to know what the first one is and what the R is. Yes? Does this work when they converge and diverge? Yes, this one works for both. So let's do a specific example. Let's do a beautiful, tiny, little, concrete, freaking example. Dear God, Jeff. No more does A1RK shit. Give me some numbers, right? Okay, you're all like, yeah, stop making a joke about it. Do it. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so let's see. What if I had A1 is 3, let's say R is um, 2. Can anybody please write a few elements of that sequence out? Three, six, well, okay. So geometric series kick ass, basically, yes? You have a sequence that's created by addition. That would be called arithmetic. We're not as interested in that. Or a sequence that's built by multiplication Geometric. Those are the two most basic sequences out there, right? Those kick so much ass, yes? And realize this, R could be negative, but let's not go there for the moment. If R was negative, what would that do to the sequence? Three times negative two is? Three. Negative six. Negative six times negative two is? Pa'at, then it would alternate. Yes, in fact, it's called an alternating sequence. If it's positive and negative, positive and negative, it's alternating sequence. That has its own freaking way of looking at things. So let's leave that alone for a moment. Well, why don't you face this way? Thank you, little dude. Um, so watch this. Let's just stop there. Let's go up to uh, k equal four. And by the way, you guys see how k and n, there's just freaking dummy variables who gives a shit, right? So I'm gonna go up to the fourth L. What is the sum of these? What is S4 here? 55? I think it's 45? Is it 45? Yeah. 45, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Let's see what this freaking formula tells me. So S4 would equal A1. What's A1? 3. Three times 1 plus what's R? 2. 2 to the 4. With me? Yeah. Divided by 1 minus 2. Well, that's a problem. Wait a minute. Did I do that backwards? That does sound like something I would do. I did do it backwards. Damn it, Jeff. Oh, I subtract. Ah, okay. Come back here, real quick. You guys see the mistake I made? I don't know. You guys are like, I don't know what you've done tonight. I made one stupid little mistake, just to show you I'm human. I'm subtracting these, aren't I? So shouldn't this one be zero minus this? Oh, geez. That's my fault, I'm sorry. 
Now it looks better. Okay. Uh, now, why does that make me feel better? Because now the negatives will cancel. Otherwise, there's no way in hell it was going to match up with this shit, right? So, see what we get. Everybody cool with what just happened? We made all these cancel because we subtracted, and I just went too fast, and I should have subtracted this. It should have been minus. Okay. So, what is 2 to the 4? Sixteen. One minus sixteen. Fifteen. Negative fifteen okay. times three. Yeah. Uh, forty-five. Negative forty-five over negative one is forty-five, right? Okay. Now, this example, I would love it if somebody, I, in fact, in the past, I've had people go, oh, uh, just add the four numbers. What the shit's it? No. What if I wanted to know s four billion? Would you want to do it this way, or would you want to do it? Again? I like somebody's like. Yeah, I'd want to do that. Yeah, please, let me do that. Please. And that's the only assignment for the whole semester, and I'll give it to the end. Give me my A and leave me alone. No, it's not how it works. Good try. You guys understand what just happened? This is a shortcut method. Instead of having to know every element of the damn series, I can now get it based on just the R value and how far I want to go, which should make sense. There should be a shortcut. Now, here's the question. What if I want to know, in fact, this is a really subtle thing. Um, I kind of want to leave all that stuff up there. Has everybody got this little concrete example? Have we got this here? Copy down. All right. What if I, what's the difference between this, oh my God, and this? You're know, like, well, one's got a little K on it. <laughs> I love it. I just wanted somebody to say that. <laughs> one's got a little K on it, Jeff. That's right. This is the actual full sum. This is the infinite sum. This is letting K go to infinity. You guys with me? Not the first three, not the first four. Every damn element, you add them up. And, and, Right there is a really weird thing I just said. How many elements are there in this full series? Infinite number, right? But it's limits, yes? So the limits kind of help us with things like infinity. They kind of help us with things like 1 over x minus 2, right? And you don't want to go to 2. It freaks out. Oh, shit. Okay. Let me stop for you. Some of you guys are looking at me like, makes sense. Okay. Good thing. Or you're just bored. Damn it. I didn't think this would be boring. Okay. Um, so what I really want to know then is, when does this exist? Given that we know. So here's SK. Let me write SK again. SK is A1 times 1 minus R to the K over 1 minus R. What happens if R is bigger than it is one or bigger, and I'll let k go to infinity. In fact, I don't really like talking about, let's look here. What if I let r go to, uh, what if r is bigger than 1? What would r to the k be? What would the limit as k goes oh, to infinity? Of a number bigger than 1 to the k. That totally goes to infinity, yes? What if r was 1? This limit, no, no. What if r is 1? What's the limit as k goes to infinity of 1 to the k? You can do it. Just 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. 1, yes? Now, real quick, real quick. I really want this to make sense. Remember what we were saying earlier that eventually it's got to be decreasing forever, right? If r is 1, isn't every element the same? So obviously r equals 1 sucks. R greater than 1 sucks because that goes to infinity, correct? So there's no way in freaking hell that the partial sums are going to go to a finite number. They're going to go to infinity. You guys semi with me? Mm -hmm. Right? If I let k go to infinity and R is bigger than 1, this thing goes crazy. So in order for this to have an actual full sum that's convergent, that's not infinity, R must be less than 1. And to be fully honest, it's got to be the absolute value, because R again can be negative. Maybe. 
So in order for a geometric series to converge, not a partial series, but the full thing to infinity, R must be less than one, which is basically like Boo, Boo was on that earlier. And if you think about it, it just kind of makes sense. If I multiply by one, same number forever, that's gonna to go to infinity. If I multiply by more than one, that's always growing. It's gonna to go to infinity. It's gotta be less than one. In fact, that very first one we did, the point 0.1 plus point 0.01, is that a geometric series? You can do this to me. What is that as a fraction? 110? What did you multiply by? What's 1 tenth times what is 100? 1 tenth. Times 1 tenth is 1,000, right? So isn't this A1 equals 0.1 and R is 0.1? Yes? Now watch this. If I use the formula, and actually, let me, let me tell you what the formula is. Let me see if anybody can get this. And I love you guys so much. Um, I, I know you're all like, good lord, man, that was a lot of shit. Um, oh my god. Do I have any other colors? Yes. Okay, what are you? You're weird. Here, come here. Um, if I let, if I assume this, if I assume this, because that's the only way it could have an actual convergent uh, full sum, right? If I assume this, what's the limit as k goes to infinity of a1 times 1 minus r to the k over 1 minus r? Well, what's this do? If r is less than 1, what does this do? It goes to zero. zero. So the full sum would just be that. That's kind of silly. And in fact, the, I think the textbook actually just calls this A. So if in the book you say A over 1 minus R, they just call A the first number, the only kind of seed number that gets things started. Are you guys semi with me? Just so you know, when you see in the book, it's the same formula. So let's see, A is 0.1, so what would S be? S would be A divided by one minus R. So this would be uh, one tenth divided by nine tenths, yes? Isn't that one ninth? The tens cancel? Yes, which is what we got earlier, of course. The 0.1, blah, 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 blah. okay. Again, this isn't David Blankenship. This is just showing that this does do what we did earlier, but we took a while to do it. <laughs> we did it in a different way. Okay, maybe. So let me ask you a few immediate questions. Okay. So, so in fact, let me make it really clear what's important up here. Um, if you have a geometric, how do you determine if something is geometric? How do you determine if something's geometric? Like, like for example, is this geometric? 1, negative 3, 9, negative 27, 80. Is that geometric? Oh, you guys aren't really doing it. Come on. Do it. <laughs> do it. I can't do, uh, what was his name? Shea LaBeouf? Do it. Yeah, oh, sorry. Um, it's good up to when? Oh, look at Jeff. Jeff's such a troll. I'm sorry. <laughs> Too bad. No, no, no. All right. So, how do you tell if something's geometric? Everything they've given you. Is it common multiple? Common multiple. I love it. Right? You can identify. So, that's not. No, get out of here. So, if I do have a geometric series where I have an initial number A1 and I have a common ratio R, uh, let's, let's change it from kth to nth. The nth sum will be a1, 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. I really should have picked that up earlier because I know that formula. Oh, two bad for me. Um, and then the full sum, where you don't stop somewhere, you go forever, will be a, well, it's officially a1 over 1 minus r, but the book calls it a over 1 minus r, if I remember correctly. If you have a geometric series where, so this works for all r, this only works for 
r less than 1. Okay, maybe, maybe. So those are definite things, concrete formulas we've learned so far. 11. Okay. So let me ask you, what time is that? Is that? Wait. <laughs> yeah, that's right, right? Okay. I never know to trust these freaking clocks in these rooms after daylight savings does this weird shit. Why don't we just go by 30 minutes and stop forever? Um, so let me ask you this. Is this a geometric series? Uh, you do it, John. Can you rewrite this as And then what's the number in front? What's this number? Isn't it just one? So is there an A1? Yes. Is there an R? What is R? R. What do you keep multiplying by? Three over seven. Three over seven. Yeah. Does that do what it's supposed to do? It's less than yeah. one. So does this converge? Not is it geometric, I'm sorry. Does it converge? Yeah. Converges. Maybe. So basically, if you see a number to the nth power in your series, it could be geometric. Just got to make sure there's nothing any else weird. So for example, is this even geometric? Uh, you can do it, John. Uh, This is geometric. Is the only thing you're doing is multiplying by the same number. Now you can see the 5 11 right? You with me? But isn't there also this other thing you're doing? Yeah. So to create the next element, you would multiply by 5 11 but then you would multiply that by 1 over whichever element you're on. That's not geometric, is it? Could I use either one of those formulas to determine anything about this? No, because there's only work for geometric series. So you have to be able to put it in the form A1 times number to the n. That's geometric. And to be really honest, let me see. Let me see. I just said something that wasn't quite right. Let's see you guys, what you guys think about this. Um, what about this one? And I'm kind of leaving off, I need to be a little more, I'm being, I'm doing something that you can do once you've done this enough. Right, you know, blah, 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 blah. Okay, hold on, hold on. You have to be more precise about this for the moment. What about this? What do you got, Jeff? Well, you're all like, right now that's zero, Um, What was I gonna do? Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, let's do this. What's different from between that one and this one? Besides five and seven, okay. What's, what's structurally different? The powers aren't the same order, right? I want you to notice something. How can you make them both? Let's go with n. How can you make them? Which one is not n? The bottom. So, can't I rewrite the bottom? Five to the n times five to the negative one, right? Now, real quick. Fundamentally, if you wrote this down, it would just be a bunch of numbers with at pluses between them. Yes. If any, if if there's something that's in every one of those, can't I just Distribute that out like uh, GCF that shit. Can't I GCF the 1 over 5 to the negative 1? Are you guys 
Somebody with me there? You guys see that? Yes? Are you able to do that with just five? Yes, that's the next thing I was going to do, but I just want to make sure everybody's cool with what just happened. Okay. You guys starting to get the, so there's several things going on. I'm not, to be really honest, what I normally, very first thing I do is make sure how comfortable you are with the summation symbol itself. But I'm going to assume everybody's decently comfortable with the summation symbol itself. Okay, I like it. Um, then you start to mess with what are you allowed to do with the summation symbol? Because I'm almost certain if you didn't do epsilon, delta, and calc 1, it's a good chance you didn't do a lot with the next level of Riemann sums where you had the formulas for the sum of i, the sum of i squared. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Where? Okay, that sucks. Okay. So you kind of missed out on a lot of, so sometimes people teach calc 1 and they don't have calc 2 in mind. So you want to do that because there's going to be a shit ton of summation symbols in Calc 2, obviously. This whole chapter is going to be have summation symbols every damn week. Okay. But is that pretty semi-cool with what just happened? I mean, it's, it's really it's just GCF. It's just an infinite sum of shit. And they all have this number in it, so let me just pull it out. And like you said, this is freaking fine. Now, three things. Is that geometric series? Yeah. Totally. Is it convergent? What's R? Three-fifths. Is it convergent? Yes. So it's, it's geometric. Check. R is three-fifths is less than one. Check. Can somebody tell me what that converges to? Did they erase our formula? Yes. You should have them written down somewhere, right? I think I'm... I've been freaking sitting around forever, and now I'm like, it's way too energetic, and I'm like all over the place. Um, so we know that. What's A1? This shit could, see, now there's a few different ways to work with this. I'm going to leave him out. I'm going to find what that converges to, and then what's the whole thing converges to? Five times that. Do you guys see that? Whatever that converges to be, what does this converge to be? Five times that shit. Yes? So you can just sort of leave that out. So what's A1? One. one. What's R? Three fifths. And the sum, we'll call this A, just to match up with the book. So this will be one over one minus three fifths. Which is? Yeah, yeah. So one minus three fifths is uh, two fifths, and then whatever that is, five halves. So what is this? What is this then? This is five halves, and I know my fives look like s's, which is not very helpful. That's five halves. Does everybody agree with that? That's definitely five halves. This is equal to five times this. So of course, what is this equal? Twenty-five halves. Done. Yeah. Okay. It's a few things to learn there. You know how to identify what looks to be geometric. If it has numbers raised to n powers, right? And there's no other n's kind of like floating around. Because then it won't be truly geometric. So then what is your goal then? Get everybody, all the n powers to be the same. You 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 pull off numbers until you get the powers to be the same. So does anyone see a different way I could have done this? Couldn't I have taken one of the threes out? Wouldn't the powers have been the same then? I would have actually ended up with the same answer, believe it or not. Yes? Um, why is A1 1? For this sequence, I'm sorry, series, A1 is 1. Because when n is, oh, I'm seeing, oh, I see, so I made a mistake. Damn you, Jeff. All right, let's try this again. Thank you. It should be three fifths, right? It should be three fifths, yeah. Because I, I was going to make this n minus one, and then I decided that might have been too trippy. So in my head, I was like, okay, so that's fine. Um, what is a one of that series? Why did John say that, uh, John? Yeah. yeah. Why did John say that that should be different from what I had? Because when n is one, what do I get? I get three-fifths. I like it. So this should have been three-fifths here. 
And I should have just stuck to my guns. I should have just done what I was going to do in the beginning, but I thought this would have made more sense. And then I just went ahead and turned around. So this would be three fifths over one minus three fifths. Be three fifths over two fifths, three halves. And then this would be five times that, 15 halves. That's better. Okay. Real quick, just to show you, just to show you. Let's do it the other way, the way I was going to do it in the first place, and I should have just stuck with that. Um, if I took all that you need is the powers to be the same, so I can identify what R is, and you know exactly what, what's going on. So, to be really, really honest, you don't even need as much of that, but I'm just trying to get us to start with the textbook method, and then we're going to start to do the more flexible stuff later. If I take one three out, don't I get, let me see this one step at a time. I have one less three now, right? Okay, so then I have three fifths to the n minus one. So then I have my geometric. What's the first term? Now when n is one, I do get one. Okay, so then S would be, for this, I'm going to have to multiply with 3 eventually, S would be 1 over 1 minus 3 fifths, which like we said earlier is 5 halves. And then what's 5 halves times 3? 15 halves, same thing. I like it, okay. I should have just done that. Thank you. Did we get the, yes? Over two fifths? It, shouldn't it be uh, three That's three halves. Right? That's three halves. Three halves. Oh, and times then five. times five. So you get what this really yeah, is total. Because yeah. we sort of were just working with this guy. Yeah. I like it. No, to give you even more <laughs> even more flexibility on how you approach these. I could have just left the five inside. I'm not going to do it all again. But then what would A1 have been? Five times three fifths. It would have been three. Blah, blah, blah. It would have all come out the same. So you could either kind of move a number out of the way and then just work with that and then remember to multiply it at the end, or you can leave it in. Mm, let's see. Let's do it that way also. Why not? Why not, Jeff? Why not just overdo a problem until it's just crazy? Um, so what if we do this instead? What if we do, we get to this point here, but we leave the five in. Now what's A1? It would be five times three fifths, which is three. Is everybody cool with that? When N is one, five times three fifths is three. R is still three fifths. So then S would be A1, A, over one minus three fifths which is 3 over 2 fifths, which is 15 halves still, of course, right? And the math is just kind of like looking at us laughing because it's like, you, do the, you did the same thing three times, Jeff, just in different orders, right? And maybe, maybe. So there's a little bit of what's the flexibility with this stuff? What's required? And how do I tell when it's a certain thing? Right? There's kind of several layers going on which is why I didn't mind doing this several different ways. Okay. That's geometric. What do I have on this sheet? Where did I put those? Um, let's see. Yeah, let's look at the geometric stuff on that section 11 two side. Halfway down the page. So number one is this guy here. This should be, now it should be pretty straightforward. So is this geometric? Good Lord, Jeff, gotta get some easy reading books. Oh yeah, okay. Is that geometric? What would R be? Yeah, so to be really, really honest, 
you should write it like this. Is it pretty cool that this is the same damn thing? Yeah. Now it's very obviously geometric, right? Okay, I like it. A1 would be when n is 1, so what would A1 be? 1 10th. 1 10th, I love it. So real quick, uh, figure out what that would convert. It Well, I just gave it away. Why does that converge? You know, R is less than 1, so that's definitely going to converge. So figure out what that converges to real quick. So you've got your formula. I think the book does it. Let me see. Yeah, it does. It just calls it A, not A1. And not surprisingly, what do you get? And why is that not surprising? Because this is actually the official way to write the 0.1 plus 0.01 plus 0.001, right? You guys see that? Okay. So of course you get one of those. We already did that problem. Okay. Um, do any of these diverge? Like what's the second one do? Does it converge or diverge? Diverge. Why would it diverge? I see you're focusing on the wrong thing though. So okay. I I know what you're saying. But the base is what's important. So you're worried about the fact that there's more fours up top? Yeah. Okay. So then you can just take one out. So we have. Oops. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could I just take a four out? Yeah. And then it would be four over five to the end. Is that is that cool? Yeah. I'm doing that a lot. Like, don't hurt me. Okay. Just the message. Okay. You guys kind of get a feel for this now? So the right thing to look for is what the bases are. Now, what's the quickest way for me to make that? What's one change I can make so it wouldn't even be geometric? Like, what if I put a, a 7 here? Is that geometric still? Yeah. Yes, of course it is, right? Of course it is, because I can just take the freaking 7 out. It gives a shit. Yes? So how, what would I have to do so that this is actually not geometric? What would I have to add? So I'm saying that you can add anything you want to to it. What would you add to it to make it not geometric? Like plus, plus e minus Sorry? If you add n? Yeah, like if I do times n. Anyway, now it's not geometric. So it's got to be some function of n kind of doing weird shit to it to make it not geometric. If it's a number multiplying by, who gives a shit? I can just take that out. Okay, maybe. Yes? Yeah, but yeah, it can't be any um, just factors of n. Okay. Yeah, that's one thing. Um, but you also have to have, well, that's the main thing. I'm trying to think. I don't want to make too much of a generalization, but you have to be able to rewrite it in the form number times number to the n power. Yes. Okay. Then it's geometric, right? Or n minus 1 power, some kind of power, or they're both the same. Yeah, okay. okay. So, like, if I did this, that's still geometric. Does it converge is a second question. Does this converge? Yes, why? Because R is less than one. Good, so it's definitely decreasing. It's definitely getting out of its own way fast enough. Cool. Um, so what about number three? Can you guys see what's the th one thing I added to number three um, that we haven't really addressed yet? Say again? It's oh, oh, uh, alternating. I'm with you. Oscillating is sort of more like going between two defined values, whereas this is just positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay. 
Um, all right, if you take the plus minus shit out of the way, can you guys see how to write the nth term? What is that, 27 eighths? Yeah. Okay. You guys see what I'm going for here? What would the nth term be? Man, I really can't write worth shit. So I, I didn't lose my sense of taste or smell, but I lost whatever kind of writing ability I had, which is not much. Three over two n. Yeah. All right, let's see if we let's see. Uh, let's take a guess. It's not a bad idea to take a guess, but then you just check. All right. So what'd you say? Sorry. Three over two to the nth power. Nth term. Three over two to the nth. Or you mean like three over two to the nth, like that? And ignoring the plus and minus for the moment, right? So we're not quite right yet, but don't worry about that part yet. So is that your guess? Yeah. Let's take a look. If n is one. Do I get this? No, I get that, right? So it should be to the minus one. There is not a damn thing wrong with writing the wrong answer first and then adjusting. Not a damn thing wrong with that. Because you got the idea and you're like, okay, it's not quite right. Let me adjust it. Now I'm good. We're almost there. I'm still missing what? I'm still missing something. It's not. Yeah, the plus minus shit, right? So the first term is positive. The next term is negative. So that's going to be negative 1 to some kind of power. So if it was like negative 1 to the n minus 1, I gave it away, damn it. Yeah. If it was negative 1 to the n, if n is 1, do I get the right sign? If n is 1, what sign do we get? And it's supposed to be? Positive. So then you can just do this or that. It doesn't matter. Right? You guys see what I'm saying? So also uh, alternating. Now you got me saying also. Alternating is always going to be some kind of negative one to the n or n plus one. It just depends on does it start positive or does it start negative. Does that make sense? So every alternating series, you can just worry about that shit at the end. Get the heart of it and then throw on negative one to the n plus one. Or minus one, right? I can also write this as, if I make that a minus one, can I write this as negative three over two? Isn't that the same thing? Let's see. If n is one, I get that to the zero is one. If n is two, I get that to the one is negative three x. Squared, it's positive in nine fourths. Cubed, it's negative. Okay, that would work. Do you guys see that? Several different op options, op options, sure. Possibilities and options, options. Um, what's a little bit better to do is to get used to doing this though. Just a little bit better to get used to putting that by itself. And you'll see why pretty soon. It's kind of nice to know what the heart is. And then here's the uh, alternating piece. Okay, now I'm just gonna say awesome. How are you guys feeling so far? I like it. And then what else? Oh, yeah. So does this converge? Or does it diverge? Diverge. Why is it diverge? Yeah, we finally get one that diverges. You can do it too. Okay. Damn, I'm taking forever talking about this, but this is some cool shit. One last example of this, and then I want to kind of tease what we're going to do next. Um, or maybe get into it even. Let's see. So, uh, yeah. Are you going to do the, the regular formula for that one? Here's the key. I want you to understand. Let me make sure I answer. So, so the formula for SK, if I stop somewhere, yeah. that works no matter what's true about R. In order for this to exist, R has got to be less than one. Yeah. This is kind of intended to be forever. So could I ever figure out S? No, because it diverges. Yeah, if I said, what's the S10, you could do that. Yeah. You could do that with this guy. Notice one little thing, though. Um, 
to be honest, well, this is where I gotta be. All right. R is actually negative three halves. But again, remember how it's the absolute value of R? R is actually negative three halves. So if you wanted to use this formula, you'd have to put a negative three halves in there. You see how that would change things depending on what K is. Okay, maybe. That doesn't happen very often. That's why I wasn't very specific about that. Okay. All right. I was about to do something else, but maybe it's better I forgot. Let me see. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I won't do that one. Yeah, that's a little bit freaky. We're not going to get it. Uh, we'll do that tomorrow. And you're like, really? Something's freakier than this? Yes. Yeah, if it's geometric okay. and the absolute value of r is greater than 1, that diverges. Greater or equal to 1. Because okay. if it equals 1, I really want this to make sense. If r equals 1, you have an infinite number of the same number. Now, we're assuming that number is not 0, or else there wouldn't even be an r to think about. It'd just be the sum of 0. Who gives a shit? Right? Okay, I like it. So, real quick, on that note, what about this? Is that geometric? It's a really good question because I want to see if you guys are cool with the fact. Is that geometric? Yes. What's R? Two. Two. Is it convergent? Yeah. Why? What number are you looking at? Wrong one. Yes, exactly. This is, now you see exactly why I would say R is two, which is greater than one. So that sucker is divergent. Right? Don't look at any other number besides what R is to see if it's divergent or not. Okay. And again, this is a good example because I did so many ratio shit. It doesn't have to be a ratio. It just has to be some number to the nth power. Why are we going to see a lot of fractions? Because R's got to be less than 1. They'll converge. And of course, you're going to have to do a lot of convergent ones, so you actually have to use the freaking formula, right? Okay. All right, maybe... Um, let's see. Maybe it is better. I forgot what I was going to do. Yeah. Oh, here's the huge thing. Okay. Here's a huge, huge thing. So glad I looked at my own handout. Um, this is so easy to not understand. Let me, let me tell you something about logic, right? If it rains tomorrow, um, will some people bring their umbrellas? If it rains, then some people will bring their umbrellas, correct? Okay, if there's a day where some people bring their umbrellas, then it will rain? No. no. All right, so obviously, if P then Q does not mean if Q then P. Okay. I don't know how many of you guys have ever done any logic kind of courses. If anybody does any computer science at all, we talk about logic all the damn time with logic gates and shit. A little and and nand and weird thing. I don't know. We're not going to suddenly talk about computers. No. Um, if... All right, so given the sum of a n, if the limit, I'm sorry, if this sum converges, you can do it, John, you can do it, then the limit, same goes to infinity of a n is zero. That is true. And I want you to really think about that. If I added the number one forever, that would diverge, correct? That would go to, that's the one plus two plus, uh, one plus one plus one, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's the partial sums. It goes to infinity. If I had a series where the elements, the limit of the elements was one, isn't there a point where I'm basically adding one forever? If their limit is one, I wait long enough, there are all the elements are basically one, aren't they? Because what does it mean for the limit to be one? At some point, they have to get really, really close to one. You guys with me? So if the limit is not zero, if the limit of the sequence elements, Jeff, there you go, buddy, is not zero, then what can I say about the series? It's got to freaking diverge. 
Holy shit. I roast myself all the time. Now, somehow students take these two statements and they construct a third one that's completely wrong. But it just sounds so good. Did I say anywhere up here that if the limit of an is zero, then, it can, then the series converges? Did I say that? Oh, hell no. Right? I could totally have a series where the, the, the elements go to zero, but they don't go to zero fast enough. That's the idea. That's like the, the thing I still have to prove to you, like the one over n. One plus one half plus one third plus one fourth. That series will diverge. Right? And right now, you just have to take me on my word. And I understand you're like, I don't know. I don't I was starting to get to know you, but then you were gone for two weeks. I, I don't even know you, dude. I, I don't know. I don't know if I can trust you. I understand. Um, but do you guys really understand? Uh, so if I have a convergent sequence, a series, the sequence elements, the limit is zero. If the sequence elements of the series is not, doesn't have a limit of zero, then that series diverges. There's no freaking chance for it to converge. So in order for a series to even possibly converge, the limit of its elements has to be zero. Now, what students take from that for somehow is they'll do a limit, and they'll say it's zero, and they're like, there you go, it converges. No, that means it has a chance to converge. So what's the big deal about chapter 11? What are we going to do? The minute we know it has a chance to converge, we're going to develop all these different tests to apply to see if it does converge. Right? What's the very first damn thing we're going to do? No matter what the hell series I give you, what's the very first thing you're going to check? What's the limit? of the freaking elements. If it's not zero, screw that problem. I'm done, it's divergent. That kicks so much ass, do you guys understand? I don't care what problem I give you in chapter 11. Now, if I'm like, does this series converge? Right, which is basically how we sound when we make things. You're gonna do the limit. If it's not zero, you're done. Thank the gods. You don't have to worry about any weird freaking tests we do. <coughs> so that's, amazingly enough, that's called the test for divergence. So really, what do you do when you go to the hospital and they give you like a COVID test, like I had them? They're trying to rule out COVID, correct? Or they give you a flu test, trying to rule out flu. They, they give you so many tests. So if you've ever had any medical problems, you know they do some stuff to try to rule out things. So that's why when they give you a problem like this, they say it doesn't converge, you're gonna rule out divergence. Because if it is that, you're done. You don't have to test for anything else. Okay, I like it. But don't get too excited. If the limit is zero, that actually sucks. <laughs> because then it could converge. It could diverge. I don't know. Oh, shit. Now I got to do more tests. Damn it. Right? OK, OK. So that's huge. And that's on that little handout at the bottom. That is huge. OK. Blah, 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 blah. OK. So let's do this. I kind of tease what's called the integral test there at the bottom. So I don't really have the most time in the world, but I want to kind of lay this out real quick, and then we'll get into it next time. Um, let me just kind of put the integral test out there. So I've got it down here. There's several conditions. So um, given Let f of x be what you get by replacing n with x. Is everybody with me? So if a n is 3 to the n, f of x is 3 to the x. You guys got it with me? No? Screw you, Jeff. So real quick, if, if 3 to the n, if I said graph this, what's a little bit weird about that request? If I say graph this, can somebody tell me a point that's on that? In fact, where does n start? Well, n starts at 1. And where does it go next? 2. So is there going to be a connection, a connecting line? Is there going to be a connecting line? No. 
when you plot points and connect, you're assuming it's continuous throughout the whole thing. Is this continuous? So when n is one, the output is three, correct? My scale's gonna suck in allocate. When n is two, the output's none, right? And then it would just be blah, 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 right? You guys with me? Is there an area underneath that? Is that a function? Yes, because it passes the verbal line test. Is there an area? Is is that an, is there an area to that? What I've just drawn is that an, how much area is that? What's the width of that? Each of those things I just drew. What's the width? Zero. Thank you. So is there an area to that? No. Okay. So if I want to use an integral to do something with series elements, I need to make it into a real function. So I'm approximating what these add to by looking at the area underneath the whole thing. Okay. So this is never going to give me what it converges to. It can't. It's not going to be that precise because it's adding a bunch of shit that's not really there. But does it make sense that if the integral converges, then this will definitely converge? <coughs> does that make sense? Isn't the integral adding a lot more shit than this guy actually has? You're going to see that from what I've drawn. My shitty ass picture is still good enough to see what I just said. You guys kind of with me? So the neat thing is, and there's still a little bit of proof that we have to do, but in this case, if f of x needs to be positive, it needs to be continuous, and it needs to be decreasing. Those are the big three. And there's gonna be a few different theorems we're gonna have, and you're gonna have to remember the requirements Oh shit, the integral one is the one that's got the most. So it's got to be a positive function, value function, it's got to be continuous, <coughs> and it's got to be decreasing. So obviously that one, could I use the integral test on this? No. Is it decreasing? No, so I couldn't use the integral test on this. In fact, why wouldn't I need to use the integral test on something that's increasing? Because if it's increasing, does it have a chance to converge? If all the elements are getting bigger and I add them all up, so why would I even give a shit, right? So it's got to be decreasing, positive, and continuous. Okay. So if, if you have that happening, then if the integral from 1 to infinity converges, yeah. So does your series. And if the integral diverges, so does your series. So I like the way the book puts it. I think the book says they both do the same damn thing, <laughs> right? So if you have a function, if you have a, a, um, a defining generator for your series, that is, when you replace it with x, it's positive, it's continuous, and it's decreasing. If those three things are, are true, then the integral does the same thing as the series does. So for example, real quick, last thing we do. Beautiful. I got like five seconds. I love it. Um, this will be quick. So what if I do have freaking this one? That one, right? Okay, what's f of x? Holy shit. All right, so is that positive? Because all the x's start at one, so that's positive. Is it continuous? Shit, yeah. Because it's only discontinuous at zero, and I don't want to include zero. Is it, oh shit, is it, um, what was the other one? I just lost my train of thought. Decreasing. Decreasing, thank you. Yes. Totally, right? One over one, one over two, one over three. Oh, check. Integral test. What is the integral of one over x? <coughs> Officially, an actual line asks you value, but I don't have to do that because my inputs, yeah. And I should really do this bullshit, right? I didn't just say bullshit. You have to do it, but anyway. Whatever. So natural log of uh, x from 1 to t 
uh, so this would be a natural log of t minus natural log of one, that's zero. And what's the limit as t goes to infinity of natural log of t? You get a oh, uh, zero, right? No, the limit as t goes to infinity of natural log of t. Infinity. So the integral diverges, therefore the series diverges. So I finally proved that assertion I made earlier. I haven't totally, because I still haven't improved interval test works, but I will. Okay, that's plenty, I'm sorry guys. So, uh, oh, let me give you this. We haven't, we just barely got into this, but I'll do this. Uh, one side is the interval test, and the other side is something that will freak the shit out of the interval. Worry about it for the next time. So if the interval converges, the series converges. If the interval diverges, the series diverges. So they both do the same thing. Okay. All right. Good to see you again, guys. I missed everybody. Oh. Uh -huh. Explain uh, the difference between sequence and series.